Hi guys and welcome back to the BFTV show sponsored by Boyle Sports. This is your Blackburn Rovers FA Cup match review. So James, let's kick the video off with the lineup. There were seven changes. Were there any players that you were surprised to see in our starting lineup, and was there any other changes that you would have made? Difficult one, I think, with the lineup. I think that um, I was surprised to see Clark Salter back in so soon. I expected him to be saved for Luton next week. Bit of a risk playing him. He could have picked up another injury today. He was substituted on sixty minutes. I'm guessing that was out of precaution to make sure that he doesn't pick up an injury. Um, but I thought the lineup was okay. I don't think there was any surprises. I think he went with what I pretty much would have gone with. You know, bought Montero, Magoma, Crowley back in, Jimenez starts. All of those sort of players that haven't really been starting, bring them back in. Um, give him a bit of game time. So I was relatively pleased other than the centre-back, but obviously he was our best choice. So so we actually started the game off really well. Dan Crowley got his first goal of the season. Uh, finally, he's managed to get one. And it was assisted by Christian Pedersen. So go over the first goal for us and then your thoughts on the first half. It was good. It was good. I mean, like you say, um, his first goal of the season. It's been a long time coming for Dan. While for me, he's been our best player at times and he's got the most ability. He hasn't added goals. He's added assists, but he hasn't got goals. And today showed what he can do. A 30-yard run from just inside his own half. Pick the ball up. Nobody really closed him down, so poor defending from them really, but he did really well and it was a great little finish. Um, and I think that it was a great start and I think that we looked the better team in the opening 25 minutes. I think in that period we should have scored again and we didn't and that shows lack of ruthlessness in Blues and the lack of when we're up, when the tails are up, when it's been a big issue of ours this season, we're 1-0 up, go for the second, go for the killer. Could have killed the game off if we'd have got a second because Blackburn let's be honest were awful mm. especially in that 25 minutes they just kept giving us the ball back we just kept coming at them but we were wasteful um, but I was, I was okay I was pleased and then we ended the half relatively even but we gave Blackburn enough chances mm. um, we were lucky not to concede I guess with that scramble towards the end of the first half but like you know like we were saying mm. during the game um Two relatively poor teams yeah. going at each other, um, and I think that to, I think one nil was just about fair. I think it was justified. And um, so at half time, uh, Bella came on for Montero. For me, Montero didn't get out of first gear, so I think it was the right change. But what were you, what were your thoughts on that change at half time? Yeah, I couldn't work out whether it was injury prone or whether it was um, like a tactical change. I'm guessing it wasn't injury because it would have hobbled off. I didn't see any pull up or anything. Um, proved to be the right change in the end with the winner um, but Montero yeah frustrates me because he's got great delivery he can beat his man he does possess a lot of quality but for at times in the first half he was frustrating he was just walking around um, so I want to see more from him and that first half didn't fill me with a lot of confidence with him to be honest so yeah, yeah right change absolutely I'm surprised he made it so early mm. um, but Okay, it was the right change and the right person came on. Mm, that definitely shows bravery from Pep there. Um, Sonjic, I think this is probably the biggest talking point of the game. I'm just going to go over quickly what happened. So, Sonjic came on, Gary Gardner came off. Not a great game from Gardner. Not terrible, but not a... Very great... average. Yeah, Very exactly. Average, yeah. Um, so, Sonjic, what looked like attempt to, attempted to pass to Harley Dean. It was a very poor mm -hmm. attempt at a pass. Uh, and Gallagher intercepts, uh, and Sonjic attempts uh, a recovery um, and, and took Gallagher down. And with the new double jeopardy rule, he shouldn't have really been sent off if a penalty was being given. So, uh, what are your thoughts on that, James? Is the red card going to be rescinded? And why did Sonic make such a rash tackle? Um, first of all, it should be rescinded because, like you say, the double de uh, double jeopardy rule means that he shouldn't automatically be sent off for being last man unless it's foul play or dangerous play. And was it? For me, no. Well, no. Obviously, just all he did was they collided. He come down. It's a penalty. But do you think the well, FA will see it as? I think they should if they do, if they know their own rules, which they implement. It's it's not. It should be rescinded. Mm -hmm. 
but it was a definite penalty, no doubt. But um, it comes from Sonia who has looked, and I'm going to be prosecuted again. I said it to Mark Watson five games ago that Sonia isn't worth seven million. I'm sorry. Fire away in the comments. I'll, I I I welcome it. He's not worth seven million. Tell me he's worth seven million. Is he a bad player? Absolutely not. Is he a good championship player? Yeah, but he's been awful in the last five games. He's been, you know, you look at Wigan, he couldn't pass a ball. Mm. He's come on today, his first touch of the ball, instead of playing a simple ball back to Cam, he's dwelled on it, he couldn't get out of his feet, he's played the wrong pass, lost the ball penalty, mm. and could have cost us the tie. Yeah. All in yeah. one all in two minutes that he was on the pitch. Now, it might do him the world a good I think it was less than I think it was ninety eight. Ninety eight seconds. <laughs> It'll do the world of good to sit this one out and have a think. Yeah, I but, think he's been uh, probably one of the weaker players over the last few games. But I think, in all honesty, it's down to confidence again. Yeah, the yeah. whole team is shot of confidence. I just think um, that like he shows a lack of uh, intelligence there. You know, an intelligent player like Crowley would know to... Well, I can't give that ball to Dean. There's a man in the way. I can't give that ball. Let's go back to camp and he'll just put it up front yeah. and we're out of trouble then. Sometimes you can't play your way out and he needs to learn that. Mm-hmm. He's a young man... And I love his attitude, and he's got great commitment and great heart, but his footballing needs a bit of tweaking. So. Okay. Well, Armstrong scored the pen for Blackburn. Mm-hmm. He's a class player. Just very, very quickly player, touch yeah. on him. I would love to have him at St Andrews, very mm-hmm. unlikely, but I think he was fantastic and probably Blackburn's best player. Yeah. Um, so after the penalty, go over the second half and, and, and tell me about it. Poor. Very, very, very poor. Blues were... All right, a man down, but we were poor in the second half in general. We gifted Blackburn four or five chances before the penalty, which they should have scored. They should have scored at least one or two of them. Gallagher had the worst game I've ever seen of a striker down St Andrews. Honestly, worse than Jimenez, and he's been bad recently Mm. down St Andrews. I was surprised as well, but he's he's lacking in confidence. And then we give away the penalty, they score, they go on 1-1, and and I thought that's it, it's game over, they're going to go and win this, and they didn't. And they were very wasteful. And if I was a Blackburn fan travelling, I'd be annoyed today. They booed. And I thought, I don't ever boo, but fair. Like, they were fair too, I think. Um, they were very poor. And actually, I thought, you know, credit to Blues in some aspects. We were solid at times. And we shot up shop and counter-attacked. And then, obviously, leading on to the goal. Thankfully, that man, Jeremy Beller, again, crops up with another important goal for Blues. Uh, one at Reading, one against Leeds last week. And then... One today. Um, and it was a really good goal, and Magoma did well to set him up. He was very non existent first half, and then grew into it second half, looked much better actually going into centre midfield, which was weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and worked well with Bella on that right hand side, and the goal was a right, slight bit fortunate, but um, yeah, good composure. He, he took his time and, and, and took it well, and went into the hat for the next round. Indeed. Which, which is great. Well, personally, I think the score flattered us in the end. Um, yeah. It. it it very easily could have ended one one. Um, so you guys voted on Twitter. The uh, man of the match to be Dan Crowley. I think that's that's justified. I think there were some other players who were probably just as good, um, but oh, I think Dan you know, Crowley yeah. definitely takes takes the hat for me. I'd give it to Davis. For me, I've had to go at Davis more times than anyone. But I think when he's good, he's pretty good. And when he's bad, you you carrying him. Mm. But today he was solid. He played with three different midfield partners mopped up everything broke up play really well and his distribution was good his composure was good so I think he's very much an overlooked player at times sometimes sometimes he's crap sometimes he's good so sometimes maybe we're good <laughs> but um, no he was he a was, uh, few decent players out there I don't think no, anybody was particularly like atrocious but everybody put in a good performance so I'm relatively happy Okay, so I think that just about rounds it up for today. We will be back again midweek with the Luton match preview, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Turn the bell on for notifications if you haven't already, just so that you're aware of when we do post. And we also may or may not have the reintroduction or the return of the BFTV podcast this week. I believe Mark and Chris have said they are finally available after their Christmas shenanigans, so be on the lookout for that one. I know I've heard inundated with messages saying when's it back it's back don't worry guys it's coming um and it's going to be a cracker to start off the new year so keep out for that one so again thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe as always and we'll see you in the next one keep your eye on keep your eye on guys